Hi, and welcome to the Unreal Engine for your tutorials. In this video, we are going to talk about foot placement. And moreover, we are going to implement a very, very simple foot placement algorithm. So, what is a foot placement algorithm? A foot placement algorithm is something that makes your character, when he is standing still above a stairs or something like so, like this image, for example, uh, his feet will adapt, as you can see here, to each stair. So basically, a foot placement algorithm is something that makes the, the, the feet of the character adapt to the floor when the character is standing still. So suppose that you are playing around with a third person template, with a mannequin on the third person template in Real Engine project. If you have a proper foot placement algorithm, yeah, the mannequin will, um, when he's standing still above the stairs, will have his feet adapted to, to, to those stairs, like so, and this will give a really badass and really cool pause, which is awesome, by the way. So, uh, but unfortunately, the uh, mannequin does not come with a, a foot placement algorithm out of the box. So, uh, it happens then you create a project based on the third person template and if you standing, if you stand still above the stairs, actually what will happen in the beginning is this. We will have the impression that the mannequin is floating. As you can see here, there is a gap between the feet of the character and the floor. So, you have this gap here. And the, with the proper foot placement algorithm, you can solve this issue. But first, let's understand the issue so we can then uh, know how to solve it. And basically, when you are playing the game, actually, you are not controlling this skeletal mesh. In fact, what you are controlling is a capsule. So, this means that the, the mannequin has a capsule, something like this, that is surrounding him, and is the capsule that handles all the collisions. And in this case, this capsule is colliding on this spot with the stairs, here. So, the capsule is colliding over here. So, since the capsule is colliding, it, it, uh, me, this means that the, the capsule will not go furthermore to the ground, because it's already colliding with the floor. And since this skeletal mesh here is attached to the capsule, since the capsule is the root component of the character, the skeletal mesh will not fall as well. So, this will make the impression that the character is floating, which is really not cool, by the way. So, uh, as a matter of fact, when you are playing the game, and if you type the console command uh, show collision, Unreal Engine will, will show you all the colliders, so he will show you the, this capsule, and you will notice that in this situation, the capsule is colliding with the, the stairs collider on this spot, so that is why the, 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 the character's feet are not on the floor, and that is why you have this gap here on this foot, and that gap on that foot. So, basically, this is what causes the problem. So, um, actually, every time you have a collision on this region, or on this region of the capsule, since the caption is colliding, it will not go to, 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 to the ground, or to the floor more, which is a, because it's already colliding here, so the character will float. More precisely, using the example of the stairs, if you have a collision in this spot, the capsule will not go um, to below that, that point, so you will have that gap which is not desirable at all. So, basically, what we want is, when we have this situation, is that the, the, the mannequin goes to the floor and that his feet adapt to the stairs. So, what you end up is this. 
So, and to achieve this solution, or to achieve this result, I would say, to achieve this result, you just need to perform three simple steps. Just three. I will mention that. I will, we, will, we are going to cover those. And you will see that uh, this uh, foot placement that we are going to implement is really, really, really simple. Just three steps. And the first step, actually, is to perform two line traces or two sphere traces. So the idea is you have here the left foot, you have the right foot, you go to the bone of the left foot, a little higher of the bone of the left foot, and perform a line trace to the floor, like so. And you do the same with the right foot. And both line, uh, sphere traces or line traces, whatever, <clears throat> will, tell, will, when, will tell you what is the impact point on the floor for each uh, line trace or for each trace of, of each foot. So basically what this tells you that when you, we are go, you must adapt the fit to the floor, one foot must match this location and the other foot must match this location so the, the both feet are properly placed on the floor. So uh, the first step, as I was saying, is to perform these two traces. So you figure out what is the higher and, and lower level for both feet. And the second step is really, really simple. Is just you just have to, to drag down this uh, skeletal mesh and you must drag the, the skeletal mesh down in order for one of the feet match the lowest um, the lowest uh, uh, hit of both foot traces. In this case, since the, the left foot was the one that had uh, a lower height, this one has an higher height, so we drag the, the skeletal mesh to, to this height because this, is, this height is the lowest. So basically, um, when you perform the second step, as you can see here, one of the foot, one of the feet, sorry, is already matching um, the, the desired position. You now just need to adjust this feet. And this adjustment is really, really simple to do. You can do it using inverse kinematics, especially in this case, we are going to use the two bone high key. So basically with two bone high key, you just control one bone, the another bone to two bones. This is one bone and this is the other bone. And basically by performing um, these two line traces, by performing these two line traces, um, these two, sorry, by performing the disinverse kinematics, by setting, okay, let's place this fit on this position, you will, you end up with having this, which is really, really sipping, simple. So let's recap. First step, perform line traces. Second step, drag the skeletal match to the lowest height of that of, of both impact point of uh, uh, points. So sorry, first perform line traces to detect the two impact points. Then drag the the skeletal mesh down. So one of the feet already matches the lowest uh, impact point. In this case, what's this one? And then the third step and last step using reverse kinematics, adapt the other foot to the to the highest. Um, point so you end up with this which is really 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 simple so let's do this okay I already have here a third person project that I created using the third person template we are going to do this this is this is really really simple we are going to do it with C++ and if I play the game for you to see, let me just play the game and do some some crazy stuff like placing the character like so. As you can see, the character is floating, which is stupid, really stupid. But if I type the command show collision, you can see that the capsule is colliding the stairs over there. And since the capsule is colliding the stairs, 
the feet and the character cannot go below that point so the the feet are floating and this is stupid this is not cool at all the same happens on these occasions so the capsule is colliding over there on the stairs so the both feet are floating so let's solve this by performing those three simple steps okay so let's move to visual studio here in visual studio i have the, the, the so on the solution explorer as you can see this is the really really basic i just created the, the this template this project i named this project simple food placement so as you can see here the name of the project is simple food placement i have the simple food placement character cpp simple food placement character dot h and also as you can see by the color i like by, by the the color syntax of my visual studio i'm using um visual assist which is really cool uh, for the programming and for coding this is really really nice so the first thing that i'm going to do is to create some protected attributes so i'm going to add some protected attributes over here and the first the first property that i'm going to create now the first two properties that i'm going to create are bone names because uh, when you are going to perform the line traces the line traces or sphere traces will be based on the position of the left bone and the right bone but when you are um, dealing with skeletal meshes bones have names and you have to to deal with bones by their names and if you want to perform a very generic algorithm that goes well with any kind of skeletal mesh um, it should be gen and to be generic enough you should have let's say two properties which are the, the names for the left bone and the, the right foot bone so the the user just needs to to type the name of the bones and that's it boom the the foot placement algorithm is working because since it knows the, the name of the bones it can perform the the both sphere traces on each uh, foot and that's it bang it's it works so let's do that uh, the first i'm going to create the f name and i will call this left bone left foot bone name left foot bone sorry name and the second is a f name and i'm going to call it right foot bone name now let's set up some macros since uh, we want these this, um, this properties to be editable and be accessed on, on the Unreal Editor on the other side we need to, to set up some, some boilerplate code some, some new properties so I will say new properties for this property I want the Edit Anywhere option so we can change this on the level editor as well this is blueprint with only um, when we are going to create a category for this named I key which is stands for inverse kinematics okay I key cool and then the meta option which is blueprint protected equals true so that if we have a blueprint that inherits this class this property will still be protected let's go copy the same um, thing to the, the second um, variable and let's just do some comments comments are really really useful and left foot bone name and for this one right foot bone name 
okay so we already have um, the two bone names to use for the line traces now um, let's um, create another three another three uh, properties one will to store the the relative location of the left bone yeah, the another one to store the, the, the relative location of the right foot bone so this way whenever the character is is standing still we since we know the relative locations of each bone we are going to do the line traces or the sphere traces okay this actually this we need to do this because immediately when the character stops um, you still have the the animation um, the be doing the blending or the transition be between the walking or jumping or running animation to the standing still animation to the idle pose and on, on those blending on when you are switching the animations the feet are not yet on the current place and if you use the current uh, foot position it will have um, weird results so we want to use the the bone positions when you already have the idle pose so one trick to do that is to store the the the, the both feet location when you already are on the idle pose and just use that whenever you you want so basically i'm going to have two two new um, properties uh, those do not need to be accessed on blueprints so you will not use the new property macro the first one is a, a vector and i will call it left foot bone relative location and the other one is a vector as well it will be right foot bone relative location also let's come place a comment on this this is the right foot bone relative location and also this is going to be sorry this is the left and now this is the right foot bone relative location okay finally you need one last attribute sorry I have a typo here right which is the um, initial mesh relative location the thing is when you are performing the the foot placement you need to push the the skeletal mesh down for a certain amount and when the character starts walking you need to undo that and to undo that you need to place the skeletal mesh on its initial position where it should be if you are not performing the foot placement so you need to start previously what is the initial relative mesh location so when when you are not performing the foot placement you place the the skeletal mesh in its original position so we need a, a another vector and to store that thing so let's call this initial mesh relative location and another a comment on this as well and we'll call this initial skeletal mesh position finally we need to to override um, a method we are going to override the uh, begin play so we are going to set the values on these properties on the begin play event so let's do this so virtual void begin 
play. What's happening with my Visual Studio? Okay, begin play. Cool. Override. And now, if you don't have Visual Assist, you will have a lamp appear in, in this spot so you can just create the definition. Uh, I will just press Alt Shift Q and select create implementation so we have the implementation right now the implementation of the begin play event so the first thing that i'm going to do is to invoke the begin play of my upper class so in order that everything stays in place and everything goes right so we have to ensure that since our character is also an actor um and this also a pawn, the begin play of all those things, the pawn, the character, and so on, are also executed. Now, the first um, going thing that we need to check if is our mesh is set. So, if our mesh is set, now we can properly do the thing. Now, this requires a include, so we need to include the character.h in order to add access to the get method, get mesh method. So, um, this way, get mesh, get skeletal mesh, that so. So, this if statement is because when you are on UE, you Unreal Engine, and you are working with the character you are just making sure that this property the mesh is set and you have some value right over here uh, if it happens you don't have anything you don't have a mesh you don't have that's why you this way you, by don't having a mesh you don't have a skeleton if you don't have a skeleton, you don't have bones, so it's not possible to store the, the bones location. So it doesn't make sense to, to have something. So, okay, include. I don't know why it's doing to include, but okay, we'll see. So, probably I need to include the skeletal mesh component. Let's check if include components skeletal mesh component basically let's see if now it stops yeah that was the thing it was not the including the character you don't need to include the character the thing is since we are getting the skeletal mesh you need to include the skeletal mesh now const f vector let's get our left foot bone world location and this is going to be our get mesh and uh, to, our, to our mesh we are going to ask the bone location get bone location and the bond location needs a name so we are going to use our property which is the left bone name so actually let me just explain this on begin play begin play is triggered when the, the game begins and when the game begins the character is in the idle position so this is the best and uh, the best time to 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 fetch to get and fetch since it's already in the idle position which are the relative locations of each bone so in a, a later on when you need to prefer line traces on the position where the feet uh, are going to be we already we don't need to wait for the idle position we already know those we just need to use them the thing is is this get bone location gives me the world location not the relative location so now we need to convert this world location to a relative location so i'm going to do this right now so our left foot bone relative location is equal to our get actor transform 
we are going to ask to our actor transform to perform an inverse transform location inverse transform position so basically we are going to ask to the transform of our actor to transform a world location into a local uh, location and the, the position that we want to transform from world to, to local is the left bond world location is the one that we declared here so that's it we already know the left foot bone relative location so let's do the same for the right so const f vector right foot bone world location is equal to get mesh get bone location and now just going to use right foot bone name yeah that's it and now our right foot bone relative location is equals to our get hector transform and ask our transform to perform an inverse transform position of the right foot bone world location yeah finally we are going to also to store the um, the default position of our skeletal mesh when we are not performing the the foot placement thing so our initial mesh relative location is equal to our get mesh we are going to ask to our mesh them to give us the relative its relative transform and basically its location yeah and that's it we just need this and um, this is it for now let us just compile this on ue4 and see if everything goes well so just let me click compile and see if everything is okay it's compiling yeah compile complete cool so now if I select the character and scroll down you will see that we have a new category the, the category that we created here the for those those these two bone names the category is the I key so there it is so we have to specify these two bone names the left bone name and the right foot bone name if you don't know the names it's really easy to 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 go get the, the the correct names you just go to the mesh of the character if you go to the mesh by clicking on, on this magnifier icon it will open you the, the the mesh here by opening the mesh you you can go to its skeleton and on the skeleton here you have the bones so you have the foot r and foot l so this is the left foot and this the right foot so i'm going to right click on the foot l for left foot and select copy selected bone names just to make sure that i don't get a typo or i don't get mistaken by typing the wrong wrong bone names so on the third person character going to the i key property i key section so let's move this a little actually since probably you have my face uh, on top of this so i'm going to push this a little upwards so by selecting the, the third person character now just looking for the i key category yeah there it is the i key category you have the left foot bone name right foot bone name so here i just paste and as you can see foot l the name i had to paste it i will paste here as well and change the l to r so we have the left foot bone name is foot l and foot r 
so yeah that's it so basically the things are already set so um, if I play the game you don't see nothing yet but those values are already being stored because I already give the correct bone names to the fit so when the game begins you have the, 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 the skeletal mesh is set as well as the bone name so these things are already set so you, we just need to perform the foot placement and for the foot placement part we need to create a new method uh, or let's say not create a new method re-implement a new method and you're going to implement the virtual void the tick function so tick and tick needs a float Visual Studio sometimes gets slow we have to be patient okay please 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 move on I just want to type float dude okay thanks float and call this delta time override yeah that's it and now to perform the implementation of the tick event and on the tick event the first thing that I want to check is is if I'm standing still if I'm standing still then I'm going to perform the line traces and do all, all, all the rest so if to check the, the if I'm standing still is really simple I just need to check if my velocity is equals to zero if my velocity is zero this means that I'm standing still so um, uh, sorry velocity is a vector so I need to measure the size of my velocity vector and if the size of my velocity vector is zero okay now I'm standing still yeah that's right now to perform the sphere traces I'm going to use sphere traces because sphere traces are are like line traces but with a, a radius so we have you we we can use a bigger radius so it match the the size of the feet of the character and for using them the sphere traces first I need to create a, a theory of actors a t array of vectors which are the actors to ignore oh come on visual studio please not again actors to ignore okay now let's oh crap yeah actor actors to ignore okay now let's do the trace thing the first I need to eat to have a, a variable to store the heat result of each uh, trace so I will call, call this left trace hit yeah left trace hit and um, now I'm going to to perform the 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 hit first I need to to fetch the world location or to know the world location of my left foot I know the relative location of my foot I must now convert the relative location to the world location so I can perform the sphere trace so um, my I'm going to create a f vector I will call this left foot location my real location and is going to going to see um, to do to to be the get I'm going to get the, the transform of my character again and now previously I did the inverse transform now I'm going to use the transform so transform position and inside transform position I'm going to pass the left foot relative location and that's it so on the begin I used a world position on the begin play I used a world 
position, a ball located world position of a bone location, and then I have the other transform to do the inverse transform position. Now I'm doing the opposite. I'm going I'm doing I'm converting from the local system, local the relative coordinates to the world coordinates. So instead of inverse transform position, I'm performing the transform position yeah and that's it now I can do the trace so I'm going to have a bool b left foot trace hit to start if the, the the trace has hit or not so I'm going to use the ukismet system library now I need I need to include this so you need to add and include to the UKismet system library. This is the include that you must do. So UKismet system library, there it is. Now sphere trace single. And for the sphere trace single, I, I need to perform, as you can see on the parameters list, um, a world context object so this is my card is the, the world context object now I'm going to use the, the for the start of the the trace I'm going to use my left foot location this location over here the world location plus some um, given height let's say because I need to perform the trace not on the feet but above a little above so I, I have a full range because sometimes you have to move the feet upper one of the foot must be uh, must be moved upper so to detect that point you must perform the, the traces from a higher level so I will have to this have vector let's say zero zero and a half a meter like so yeah that's it now um, the end location of my trace seat is going to be also the left foot location plus f vector zero point f let me just do an enter for the sake of organization zero dot f and now minus 100 so we are going to check if there is some ground one meter below the the, the feet so minus yeah 100 okay now the the sphere radius the sphere radius is going to be 10 10 centimeters you can then test and do um, higher radius you can do that now our trace type query is going to be the visibility channel which is the trace type query one this is the visibility channel uh, we don't know we don't don't need uh, to perform a trace com a complex trace so I, we're going to set this to false um, for the actors to ignore we're going to pass the previous array that we already created and we want to do some debugging so we are going to use the e draw debug for one frame let me just press another enter for the sake of organization so my my line of code is not too big and to store the result of all this um, of all the of the trace on the variable left foot trace hit this variable here that I created for for this specific thing and lastly um, to ignore self so to ignore the the self actor I'm going to set this to true so uh, let me show you one thing just for the sake of curiosity this is the sphere trace single if I go to the my character blueprint 
might say that I want the blueprint character and on the event graph I try to do uh, the same thing sphere trace single sphere trace by channel it's the, the same as the sphere trace single as you can see those are the same things you have the start then end like so we have the start we have the hand then you have the radius here the radius is uh, 10 then you have the trace channel the visibility channel is this one trace type query one then the trace complex, we set the trace complex to false. Then the actors to ignore, which is the this one that we created before. Then the type of debug, draw for, um, in our case, I, I said draw for one frame, this thing here. And lastly, the left trace, it is where to store the thing. It's this, it's, it's the, the thing, this thing over here. And this bold thing, uh, this bold thing, is the the the, the result that the, the sphere trace uh, single returns. It's on this variable. And I forgot to, to mention one last thing: this ignore self, which is already checked, so by default it's true, is this last parameter that I have here, which is uh, corresponds to the ignore self thing. So basically, this is exactly the same thing as this. In fact, if we drag the mouse over here, as you can see, it says target is Kismet system library. So this function is on the Kismet system library. And as you can see, I'm calling this function from the Kismet system library. So this is really simple. And uh, we are going to do this in C++ because it's really, really easy to do. And Actually, I think Blueprint should be used just for cosmetic things. Uh, all gameplay code and uh, gameplay stuff should rely on C++ due to optimization and stuff. Now, let's do the same for the right foot. So, left F hit result. I'm going to call this right... Sorry, I was with caps on right trace hit the same thing const have vector right foot location equals to get trans get transform but here it can be get transform or get type transform is the same get transform transform position i want the right foot bone relative location now we know the, the real world uh, location of the right foot we can perform the right foot traits so ball b right foot trace hit equals to u kismet system library sphere trace single sphere tree single this because it's the constant object now it's the right foot location plus f vector uh, 0 0 50 sorry this is f vector okay now for the end of the trace it's the right foot location right foot location plus f vector f vector of 0 0 minus 100 okay 10 for the radius e trace type query visibility channel which is trace type query 1 false because we don't want this trace to be complex our hectares to ignore then the debug thing he draw the brace for one frame store this on the right trace hit variable right trace hit variable and ignore self okay that's it so this is the first step 
just perform the line traces. So let's compile and see um, if this is working. So the, those these line traces are going uh, are shown uh, on, by using the the e algebra trace for one frame. So we they are being shown on each frame, and they will only happen when the velocity is uh, zero. So when the character is standing still. So let's check this out. So let's go here compile. Okay, it's done. So when character is standing still, as you can see, you have the line traces. So here you have one line trace, the other one, and now we can see which is the the lowest point. So where to drag the skeletal mesh and where to put the other foot. So yeah, the first step is done. Two more to go. For the second step, we are just need to compare the, the height of each trace, of the impact point of each trace, and then drag down the, the skeletal mesh in order to one of the feet matches the lower um, impact point of both traces. So let me create this variable. Let's call this Z offset, which is the amount of offset that we are going to perform on the skeletal mesh and now we are going to compare the the height of the both trace hits so if the left trace hit impact point dot z <coughs> sorry is minor is less than the right trace hit impact point dot z so this is what happens if the the, the left foot is on the lower ground Otherwise, this is what happens when the right foot is on the lower ground. So basically here the Z offset is equal to the left foot location. Dot Z. Dot Z. Minus. Left. Sorry. Left. Trace hit dot impact point dot set so yeah basically that's it and now the same thing but uh, for the other foot in this case the the amount we want to drag is the the thing so left foot here is the right foot location z minus so this gives you the distance between the right foot and the floor. The right foot trace, right trace hit, impact point, dot Z. Yeah, that's it. Now we are going to move the mesh this amount of uh, this distance, the, the distance between the lowest feet and the floor. So we are going to set the mesh, get mesh, set its relative location, set its relative location to the initial relative location plus f vector of zero, zero, and minus z offset. Also, we have to sum uh, to sum. Um, in theory, this should work, but is not going to work, and I will show you why. If we are going to to our character, open its blueprint editor, and go to the viewport, and if I pick, let me. I, I will show this on the, the skeleton itself. And if I show you the the left foot bone, as you can see, the left foot bone is not below the the foot itself, but it's more or less on the ankle. So if you place this bone on the level, on the ground, 
it means that the rest of the foot, the part of the foot below the ankle, is going to be under the ground. And we don't want this. We don't want this part to be under the ground. So basically, what we are going to tell is to set the, this bone a little higher than the ground level. Let's say 14 centimeters or so. So basically, we are... Um, giving a discount for this margin here because let's I will show you also the right foot the bone for the right foot which is on this side as you can see the right foot is the ankle also as well so if we place the right foot on the on the floor it means that the entire foot will be under the ground and we don't want that we want one above the ground so we must to have this distance more or less so I'm going to add to this 14 um, centimeters. Yeah, and that's it. Um, if we are not uh, standing still, so we need to do one more thing, which is set the relative location of the mesh. to its initial relative location so okay when the character is moving everything goes back to normal so we must undo the pushing downwards of the skeletal mesh yeah that's it this is really simple this is the second step so the second step let's compile and test compile complete cool so if we go here Oh, it's not working. Why? Let's see what I did wrong. Let's just check the code. Set offset, initial mesh vector, minus FZ offset. If left trace hit, right trace hit, left trace hit, impact point, right trace hit, impact point point z offset is left foot location z minus left trace heat impact point z z right foot location okay this is the z offset and now we're going to set relative location of our mesh is equals to initial mesh relative location yeah i think it's it let me just compile again just to make sure ah no it's working yeah it's working as you can see the character probably did not refresh the code yeah it's working perfectly so the um, as you can see on the spheres the the the, the skeletal mesh is being dragged down to the lowest to the lowest point yeah it's working closely so if i type the show collision console command you see that the capsule is above the stairs but we have pushed down the skeletal mesh so now one of the feet is already on the ground we just need to to adapt the other foot okay so we just need to adapt the other foot because right now the foot is under the ground now we have to adapt to not being under the ground okay so step two complete we just need to adjust the step three okay for the step three we are going to create um we need to to use the animation blueprint so we must go to here to the inside our uh, character our animations you need to go to the third person character animation blueprint and go to our anim graph and it's here in the our the anim graph that we are going to perform the um, inverse kinematics thing so we are going to use two two bone i key notes one for the left foot another one for the right foot and as you can see those 
nodes they need some some properties the health is how much you want to to do how, how, how much you want to perform the the foot placement that is the inverse kinematic zero it will turn off the inverse kinematics one which will give full power to the inverse kinematics and if you say let's say 0 0.5 which will be not in the foot will not be in the um, default position not on the ground but more or less in the middle so you just think i just want half the the um, foot placement so here we are going to set to zero to turn off and to one to turn on we are not going to to use intermediate levels but as you can see here the each two bone IK needs some some properties like the effector location joint target location and the, the alpha so we need three values for one foot and three values for the other foot so we are going to use and set up these values on our on our um, animation blueprint but uh, also uh, we are going to to perform since we want to to do these values and, and make these changes in C++ we are going to create a specific uh, class which is an anim instance what is an anim instance if we go to class settings on this animation blueprint by looking at class settings you will see that one animation blueprint extends from an instance which means that if we create a C++ class which is an anim instance that has all these variables we can say and state that okay now the parent class of the character default um, animation blueprint will be our um, and in instance which already has all the magic by setting up these values and the code will work flawlessly so this is what exactly what we are going to do so to do so we need to go to the here to the Unreal Engine and here on the C++ classes here we are going to create a um, a new C++ class and we are going to, to 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 choose a parent class we are going to pick show all classes and we are going to look for a name instance so we are going to say we are going to create a C++ class that is an anim instance or each parent class is an anim instance then we are going to place name this class and since this is for uh, inverse kinematics, I'm going to um, name this class IK anim. Let's say foot placement anim instance. Okay, this is anim instance that I'm going to use just for foot placement. I'm going to create a class now in Real Engines creating the, the classes, compiling the code and if everything goes well and, and will going is going to be well. Yeah, compile complete so everything is okay, compile completed and so on. So right now we we can already go here and instead of saying our parent class of this animation blueprint is not an instance is going to be our food placement and in instance we can do this on the fly and that's it it works pretty well because our foot placement is also an anim instance so no problem with that now we are going to our visual studio project and as you can see in the solution explorer we already have the simple um, foot placement anim systems dot h and dot cpp the dot cpp is also here and we are going to to move to the anim instance dot h and create those um, properties so we can work with uh, them on the blueprint uh, side which is the here the anim graph so we need to create uh, several um, properties protected properties 
So the first one is going to be, as you can see here, the left foot effector location. Then we will set the joint target location and then the alpha, the, the variable for the alpha. So effector, joint target and alpha. So the first one is an F vector. Is going to be the left foot effector location. This is going to be a U property because you want to, to have access to this on the blueprint site. So it's going to be visible anywhere. Blueprint read only because I just want to read the values. I don't, don't want to, to change anything. Blueprint read only. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the category for this is going to be um, also inverse kinematic, so I key, and I will also give the meta to this blueprint protected equals true. Okay, that's it. And now I'm going to comment this left foot effect location. Yeah. That's it. Now, an F vector, another F vector. This is for the joint target location. So, joint target left. I'm going just to copy this because all these will have the same type of U properties. I just need to place a new comment is going to be the joint target to the left. And now, finally, a float value for the alpha. Let's call this left foot, sorry, alpha. This is going also to be a U property. And let me just type a comment, it is going to be left foot alpha. That's it. We are done for the left foot. Now we are going to do the same for the right foot. So basically F vector right foot effector location U property right foot effector location then f vector joint target right joint target right And finally, right foot alpha, and right foot alpha. Yeah, that's it. So, there is one thing. Um, that we need to, 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 that I need to explain here, which is the joint target left and the joint target right. These two, these two things. Actually, when you are rotating a bone, let's say when we are going to rotate to place, to, to place the foot upper or upper to, to match one thing, um, the, this uh, effector location, joint target location, this will um, let us set some kind of constraint in order to to the knees, so the knees don't bend um, backwards. We always want the knees to bend forward. So basically, uh, I'm going to to put some magic numbers here. So in order to let's imagine to create an imaginary axis, 
that also forces the knees to bend forward instead of bending backwards otherwise we will have a really awkward defect like an ostrich or something that bends the knees backwards instead of bending the knees like this forwards so um let me do this uh, on the constructor also um to do so i need to declare some public things like the constructor we need to have our ui key uh sorry our u food placement and in instance which is the name of our class this is our constructor and now some functions to set these properties so i need to to set the the right foot effector location the left foot effector location which is where we want the, the fit to be so we have a proper foot placement and these are going to be set and called from here from the character we already know the positions of each impact point so we're just going to ask to set those from here and to set those things we need to have a setter methods so we are going to declare those methods here so i need a setter method for the left effector location so let's have a set left effector location which is receives a f an f vector it's going to be in the new e vector location yeah that's it and we also need the same for the the right so set right effector location for the right foot f vector new effector location and now void set left foot alpha which receives a float new alpha yeah that's it and now avoid set right foot alpha float new alpha yeah that's it sorry save and now let's implement those things first implement the constructor yeah now let's just have the implementations of all these methods so create implementation create implementation create implementation and create implementation so we have already those so we have set setter methods for the effector location and for the alphas we don't have for the the joint target left and joint target right because we are going to set those with default values on construction so the joint target left is equal to f vector so those are the magic numbers 50 217.502996f minus 38.598 oh seven okay yeah what's wrong ah yeah i don't i was doing a typo and joint target right the target right yeah that's it is equal to f vector i i have these numbers written down on the paper i'm just looking just to check if i have everything because i know um i don't know these values <laughs> i have to write them so i i can i had to write them because i i discovered them by trial and error f 217.f 38.f yeah that's it so this is to make sure that our knees will not bend backwards they will always do like so 
now the set effector location is really uh, easy so left effector location is going to be the new effector location the right effector location is going to be the new effector location easy now the left foot alpha is going to be the new alpha easy peasy lemon squeezy and now the right foot alpha is going to be the new alpha yeah that's it cool 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 now um we are just um do these things uh perform uh, just save compile so we can use those 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 values already here on the anim graph like so so let me just compile to make sure everything is okay and in order so we can already use those things in our um anim graph <clears throat> okay compile complete cool no no code errors at all uh, <laughs> during this video which is really cool uh so now uh during this video until now <laughs> i don't know this in the future so now i'm going to drag this to the component pose okay yeah yeah like so now this is going to be here like so okay and here we'll have the final result okay cool now for the this is going to be the left foot and right foot for the left foot the effector location just let get left effector location here it is left effector location just right here this is the variable the getter that we created um, this is the the variable that we created here and this is a this is a u property that is visible and as blueprint read only we can have a getter so we have a left foot effector location like so now the left joint right what was the name that i did to this joint target left so get joint target left yeah that's it like so and now left foot to get left foot health okay perfect now the same for the other one so we need our right foot effector location that's it just uh, move this a little bit further away so we have space here and there are people probably with OCD that doesn't like crossed wires and stuff now the joint target right get joint target right yeah that's it and now the get right foot health yeah that's it we are basically have we basically have everything set up now we just need to go to our tubo nike and set here some some properties the first one is the ik bone the ik bone is the foot l this is the bone that we are going to to affect and to place at the the the, the correct position place at the correct position the effector location is the one that we want is the knee the knee tend to knee so is the parent bone of the foot so is going to be on parent bone space and the effector target um is going to be the parent of the left foot which is the calf uh, sorry not the calf sorry it's the thigh yeah because it's the root yeah the root of the parent the because the parent bone of the effector is the tie yeah that's it tie and the effector location so sorry the effector location 
it's on the world space sorry the factor location this thing is on world space because it's the position of the line trace and the joint target they, this is the joint target the joint target it's on the parent moon space yeah and the joint target is going to be here is the thigh yeah, that's it is going to be the thigh so because the parent of the key is the thigh that's the thing so our effector is going to affect the the foot bone the, co the the coordinates that we are going to set for the foot bone it's the impact point so yeah they are in the world space and those magic numbers that i wrote in c plus plus were for the parent bone space and um, according to the thigh so let's do the same but for the other foot on the right um key uh, a right foot so here is the foot r the effector location it's on world space the joint target it's on parent bone space and it's the thigh r so let's make sure it's the thigh r parent bone space world space okay foot r okay and here is thigh l okay for left and foot tail i think we have everything set up on the blueprint side so we just need to to finish our third step so the first uh, we already made the the first two steps which are the line traces and pushing the mesh down now we just need some do some um final code on the tick function of the character which is going to do to set the the variables and call these the to set call these methods to set the variables so the uh, foot placement happens properly so the first thing now we need to make a uh, uh, another check is to to know if our anim if our animation blueprint is of the type um, U foot placement and in instance because otherwise we cannot call these methods on our animation blueprint. So we will try to to create um, a foot placement and in. So we are going to try is to perform a cast, a cast to our U foot placement and in instance. And what we are going to try to cast is our get mesh and ask our mesh to give us its animation instance. To get uh, its animation instance. And if this cast succeeds, we need to add this include. So we need to include here our foot placement anim instance, otherwise, this won't compile. So Make sure you have this include then. And now, um, after um, trying to cast the anim instance of the mesh to our U foot placement uh, instance, let's see if this is valid. So, if it's not valid, if we don't have um, a reference to our FP anim, so we will just abort everything. So, we'll just return about the the tick function otherwise we are going to do this and besides doing this we are going to to set some things here which are really simple to to set so the first thing is on our fpnm to set the left foot so this is where the left foot uh, is below the right foot left trace impact point is so we set the left the left foot alpha to zero because we want to because the left foot is already on the ground it's already it's already uh, it's on the below be, uh, on the lowest point so it's already matching the the line trace because we already pushed we are going to push the 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 skeletal mesh down so this is okay we don't need to to have in inverse kinematics working so we set the, the, the foot alpha to zero and um, 
we will set the the right foot alpha to one. Set right foot alpha to one. And also, before setting the alphas, we need to do one thing, which is to set the effector, the left set set left effector location so let's say okay now the left foot is going to this position and the position is the left sorry is the right and here is the right sorry we set right effector location because we are adjusting the right foot right trace hit impact point plus the f vector of 0, 0, 14 because we want our um, we want the foot to be below uh, to be above the ground otherwise you will get the, the ankles touching the ground and the rest of the foot below the ground or under the ground so yeah that's it so let's do the same for the other foot so fp anim set left foot effector location which is the left trace hit impact point plus f vector 0.8 0.f 14 14 and now let's set those alphas set left alpha to 1 because we are changing the, the, the left alpha and now fp anim set right foot alpha to 0 yeah that's it and now if we don't when we are walking normally uh, we are going to disable the, the foot placement, so we need to set off the alphas. So FP and in set left foot alpha to zero and FP and in set right foot alpha to zero. Yeah, and that's it. I think we've done. Let's save, try, compile, no errors, please, ah, cool, no errors, <laughs> entire video, no errors, and now if we are going, yeah, it works, it works, look, cool, how cool is that, yeah, there are some things that let's say when you are jumping you can see that is a slope because you are instantly teleporting when the character falls instantly teleporting to, to the floor because the, the capsule is above the floor and then when you jump you just instantly teleport into the right position and it performs the jump so you have a, a, a slope but yeah there are some things to, to solve especially when the character is walking uh, above the stairs you should also do some some things with that but for uh, the thing when he's standing still this is actually pretty good because it works really 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 well as you can see here so um, actually I'm going to do one last thing is going to to the BSP volumes uh, sorry BSP uh, geometry BSP and I'm going to create a curved stair just for the fun so we can move the here and see how cool it is and how it's working and yeah yeah it's working really 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 well so okay guys <laughs> thanks for watching I really hope you enjoyed the video uh, I have more tutorials for you um, when I have time to do them I, I will post them online really really thank you and <laughs> see you soon